Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth Hack Pi workshop. Um, this time we're gonna be going over web scraping. Um, so if you're watching this on the recording, this is our slide just to look over everything you have to do before you begin. So make sure you have Python installed, um, beautiful soup and requests, and also make sure you have a text editor of your preference. For this workshop, we're gonna be using VS Code, um, but you're also welcome to use PyCharm or Atom as well. And yeah, then we go to the next slide. So, yep, this is the web scraping workshop. Um, we're gonna have this workshop be taught by Thomas Gary. So Thomas, if you'd like to introduce yourself real quick. Hey, I'm Thomas Gary. I've uh, been working with HackPy for this year. It's been amazing. They're epic. David, awesome. Daniel, awesome. Henry is here, he's awesome. Trevin, also here, he's awesome. And yeah, so, you know, I'm, I think we should just get into this. So here we go. So yeah, we can find the slides at this link right here. I can put it in chat real quick. Um, and then we can begin. Okay. So what is web scraping? So let's say you wanna get some data and you just, there's no API for you to like, just go like, oh, I, I'm gonna get a, do a get request on this. I'm gonna get all this data. And oh, someone is asking for access. Uh, David, do you think you can? Okay. So yeah, so if there's no API, then, you know, you just keep searching, right? But let's say you keep searching, you, you cannot find any data. So then basically we have this idea for you, web scraping. So this guy's gonna find the data, he's gonna scrape it. So yeah, we're gonna start off with just a basic review of HTML and HTML structure, because you need to be able to understand HTML in order to web scrape. So looking at this HTML structure, if you remember from last quarter's hack school, um, basically the way that all HTML is formatted is within HTML tags. So you have an HTML tag, which encompasses a whole file. You have a head usually and a body. So the body can contain things like P, which is like a paragraph. It can contain TD, which is like the table data, which we will be scape, which we will be scraping from. The head can have title, scripts, etc. And so yeah, usually you'll have closing tags associated with the opening tags. And if not, you could have self-closing tags. So yeah. So now we really need to know, how do we select the data? So like, how can we filter through HTML? And um, so usually what we use is ID and class. Um, if you're familiar with jQuery, um, you do this all the time, so select elements. And so here, if we look at the uh, image, these images right here, then we can see that the IMG is the tag name, the SRC is the attribute name, the, uh, which is like source. The tabby.jpg would be like a link to uh, a file of an image. And the class is something that we, we can make our, ourselves and associate other images with the same classes. So for example, these two are two different types of cats. So we assign them the class name cat. And so later we can filter through HTML just by using the class name cat. And so go to this, right? Every ID can have, or sorry, every, there can only be one element with a specific ID, but with classes, you can have multiple of the same class. So, Let's say we wanted to go through and we were like, oh man, what are the top, top rated movies according to IMDb, but we didn't have an API. So what we can do is we can actually just go to the website, um, which I can show. And basically you just go to this URL. You can type control shift I and um, move this out a little bit, it's in tablet mode. But anyway, so you can, this is the control console um, for Chrome, and you can select an element to go to its exact 
space on uh, in HTML. And so, um, as you can see, like if you wanted just the titles, if you wanted like all the titles of all the top rated movies for IMDb, you could just use the class name title column to access each and every single one of these titles. They all have the same title column class. And there's, so yeah, TR is table row and TD is table data. And so, yeah, as you can see, they just keep going down. So back to this. So on the slide, I, I mentioned that you could get title column and rating column to get the title and rating. And yeah. So now to actually selecting them. So as I mentioned before with jQuery, um, the way you select in jQuery is you use the hashtag to get an ID and use the, um, the dot to select um, by class. So with this HTML, does anyone, okay, actually, I guess it just says. <laughs> uh, so basically, this paragraph tag has class red. And anything under class red will be colored, will have its style attribute colored as red. So this text will be red. And the div means divider. It has an ID of header. So anything, uh, if you ever want to select an ID, you use the hashtag. Um, so anything with ID header, well, we're changing its font family to Calibri. So all of this is going to have uh, the font Calibri. And um, so yeah, as you can see, like I mentioned, like without the class name, this is not going to be red, even though it's within the same div. Um, so yeah, this is basic. Does anyone have any questions, by the way? Just that before I move on. Okay. So next up, we want to actually uh, go over what is like how to request to a page. So in case anyone didn't know, basically with URLs, a lot of times they'll use um, paths with um, queries to structure their website. So Amazon actually does this. And so you can check this URL actually. I guess I can do that real quick. Um, basically what this is saying is we're going to the third page with the search keyword funny cat. And there you go, there's some funny cats. <laughs> and so, yeah, as I said, so the path is presumably means search. You put a question mark to put the query. You give it a key value pair. So in this case, uh, they're using K to denote like key. And um, funny plus cat would be like funny space cat. And to make more um, queries, you add an ampersand and another key value pair. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I have two questions here. Actually, I think this was updated. I'm pretty sure I checked like yesterday. So you might not be able to find this, but I think there was one very similar to that. Anyway, so uh, what are the two selectors we generally use to web scrape? Uh, just type your answers in chat if you could. Um, I forgot my eye clicker today. Is it okay if uh, attendance isn't taken or? Shoot. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh. I, and I think you're going to lose some points, David. Shoot. Okay. You're going to lose some membership points. No. Dang. Well, dang. Sorry, David. I found the shirt. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> um, What happens if I rate one? <laughs> Um, well, then you, uh, there's, there's some sketchy things you could look up that I don't think I should say. <laughs> I'm not sure or not, but anyway, um, so yeah, so basically the two selectors are class and ID. And so to select a class, it was the dot and to select an ID, it's the hashtag. Okay. And then. How do I make a request on Path S for cat shirts? So basically, uh, as I was saying before, you could just um, let's see cat shirts. You just do cat. 
shirts and then change the page to five. And boom. I think Henry's lying about finding it. It's, oh, there it is. Maybe. I don't know. All right, let's keep going. So yeah, so now we're going to start the actual web scraping. So unless um, anyone has any any questions at all about anything we went over, you can ask. Just feel free to ask in chat. Okay, so first, beautiful soup. So this was named after like what they what people colloquially called HTML, which is um, which, uh, sorry, not I don't know real not, but anyway, which is uh, they call it tag soup because um, when you look at HTML and it's not like ordered in like a pleasant way, it looks disgusting and it looks exactly what it sounds like, tag soup, a bunch of tags. And so basically beautiful soup will like parse it in a way that makes it pretty. So um, yeah, basically you could pass in like an HTML. Usually we're gonna be using a request to a request library to request like the HTML of a website and then parse through it. Uh, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> Good title. Anyway, um, so yeah. So for example, if you wanted to select uh, all of the anchor tags. Oh, so an anchor tag is what we use to make, um, anyway, to make uh, like links. And so what we're saying here is for each link in a find method, finding every single anchor tag, we can print the uh, href of the anchor tag. So this would print, for example, all of these example.coms if they were in an anchor tag in your website. Um, so yeah, you can also use the iterated for loop if you needed to. So um, let's say we wanted to find the first instance of the H3, then you could just use soup.find. If you wanted to find all of them, you could use what we just used, or find all. Um, and so, yeah, just to reiterate, this would be an object. This would return an object, not just the, um, the H3 like information. So we'd have to actually extract the text. So we could use dot get underscore text, or we could just use dot text without parentheses. Um, okay. So, as I mentioned before, this is how we could use the request library. Uh, you just say, you can set a variable r for anything you want to request.get. And this just does like a get request, right? And as we were doing before, like the chart topping the top movies on IMDb. And I don't know if the parentheses have to be there. But yeah, this would be how you get the request. I mean, the um, request body. And so um, there's also other information you get when you do this. So you could get this status code. So it's, this is like your HTML status codes of like 404 if it's not found, 200 if it's a success, et cetera, et cetera. You can get the encoding, you can get it as a JSON and as text, as I mentioned. Okay, so I'm gonna demo going through um, uh, let's see, going through, uh, getting from the IMDB website, as I've alluded to before. And so basically, I know somebody was having issues. I hope they were able to install the pip. But basically, all you need to do to set up is just create a file. You can call it whatever you want. I called it scrape.py. And you type from BS4, import beautiful soup, import requests, and so now we have to do what we just said. What do we have? The response. Um, so we could just use this, actually. Uh, so r is equal to request socket. And then db.com slash chart slash top. So we can, I believe we can just print this right now just to see if it's actually requesting. Um, 
So we can see that real quick. And I believe it, oh, I didn't save, my bad. Request is not this option. Okay, so yeah, this, this gave a response of 200, so we are requesting. So now we have to use beautiful soup to actually format the um, response. And so what we can do is say data is equal to, I mean, r dot, um, r dot text. And we can say that, so we have to set up the beautiful soup. So we have to set up beautiful soup to be data. And we use the HTML parser. So basically, HTML parser is just like the default. You could also use X. LXML, I think. And there's other ones you can find online just looking up um, like beautiful soup parser. And so what we're going to do is get all the titles. And so as I mentioned before, we can use the class name to get each of these titles in each row. And so to do that, we could just say like titles is equal to and then uh, soup.find.all. And then, so this is table data, table data. And we're going to do um, with class name, uh, title column. So right now we could just print this for example. And so, yeah, as you can see, it prints a whole bunch of just beautiful soup and um and so yeah what we need to do actually is get the title attribute out of this so we can um use the for loop as like in the slides whoops that's the javascript okay um we could do for title in titles and then print the title and just comp this out so the hashtag rate is just um a comment and you could do control backslash to batch that. Uh, did I save it? Oh, wait, whoops. So yeah, this, this again actually will get each element, right? So now you have to go through the each element and do a dot find on, um, on the A tag, because we're, we're going through the A tag and so this is the hyperlink. This would be if you wanted to get the links. And then this is the title. So we could just find the title. So let's do that. Not, oh wait, whoops. Um, I mean, yeah, let's see. And there's more text. There you go. So yeah, this is basically just how we could get all the titles and they're in order. All right, we can check real quick. So Shawshank Redemption, Godfather, Part Two, Dark Knight, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. What's your favorite movie? Oh, yeah, put in that. I did that, my bad. Okay, so yeah, if you uh, hate any of these movies, please tell me in chat, um, but yeah. Also, if you have any trouble doing this, also please tell me that in chat. Um, so yeah, I've never heard of most of these movies, um, but anyway, so, um, do I need... okay, so let's see. Now I'm moving on. So now we want you guys to go through and try to print, like extract from the website, the um, movie titles as well as ratings. And so just a little hint, you will have to use, or well, yeah, unless you did twice, you would probably have to use the, um, the I in range of, and then um, the length of titles, because you need to be able to uh, 
get two things, not just finding the uh, title. So yeah, uh, do we want to go into, uh, so we're going to pause the recording real quick and just try that for a few minutes uh, in Discord. When isn't Jack and Jill starting Adam Sandler? If you need help. Why do I not have code? Okay, whatever. <laughs> we good? Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so basically, if you didn't get that, we just we create the same thing for ratings. And um, if you saw earlier in the presentation, actually, we were kind of alluding to it. But yeah, there's also a thing called ratings. And so we can use rating column. And there's like another class as well that you had to find called IMDB rating. And so basically we could just, um, so we basically just have to um, create a similar thing to this. And instead of just pr printing it, we have to actually find it first and then format it. Uh, so let's do that. So we're going through all the titles that we just found and we're trying to look for the a tag again doing the get tags okay that was. and so now we just do the same thing for ratings again go through all of the um like sections and we're finding the um this characteristic called strong and here we are get text. So this was the and we're printing as well. Print. And so you could do what's called a formatting string and do movie. Okay. And so, yeah, this is basically all you needed to do, I believe. And so, oh, wait a minute. Oh, shoot, live debugging. Okay. So, I didn't save it. <laughs> oh. Let's see what is going wrong here. If anyone knows in chat, <laughs> uh, yeah, we got to forget the colon. Here we go. Let's see. So looks like we can't get the text from the string. Let's see. Mm. So yeah, this was the class that we were selecting and we're getting from the strong. Should be able to get the text from the strong though. So I'm not exactly certain why this is occurring in a second. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Oh, shoot, this chat, my bad. Do you need a colon, ratings of I? So, oh, you yeah, said get text, not just a text, I think. Right, but that wasn't, yeah, let's see. Somebody was suggesting that my ratings of I. No, so yeah, that would make a lot more sense. For me. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. So yeah, you know, sometimes you just, you overlook things, but yeah, you're right. I should have been going through the ratings to find uh, the strong tag. So anyway, this this prints out like as you could see, all the ratings of each movie, as well as the most popular movies. 
And so, all right, here we go. So, um, so what other information can we extract? So what we can do is say we wanted to go, we wanted to go request a web page and we also wanted to request another web page within that web page. So what we can do is just extract the links, like how we were doing with the titles. So instead of extracting the titles, we can extract the href tag and we can do a request on that tag so that we can web scrape that new page. So in the example we're about to go over, basically what we're trying to get is the release date. And as you can see, the um, there is no release date on each of these rows. So what you can do is you can click on it and find the release date right here. And so here it is and select it this way. So let's go through this. Um, so we're going to have the same similar setup. I'm just going to leave this here for now. And instead, uh, instead of just printing each movie and rating, we're going to um, create another link that we're going to request from. So let's do that. So link https imdb.com slash. And we can just, uh, basically what, what we were showing before with the uh, URL enhancement, we could do the same thing where we just have the imdb.com and we have the title name as a search query, kind of, I mean, as an href. And so if we look at back at this page, um, go to, oh, it's in mobile mode in a second. Yeah, this is m.imdb, so there we go. We can look at the title again. And under the title, we, uh, so this is the text of the title, but we also have the href. So this is the link to where we want to go. And so what we can do is grab the href from there. Um, like, oops, like so. So now that we have access to the href under link, we just want to create a new, uh, like a new similar variable to R. So what I'm going to call this is page response and do requests.get uh, under link and um, so now basically what this does is it will get like the similar information to R. So we, we do have to get the text of it as well. So let's do movie page. And by this, we're getting all of like the HTML as text. And um, so again, we have to make the, we have to format it so that it's not just tag soup and instead beautiful soup. Okay. And so now we can actually search for the release date. And so what we're going to do is search for the title that was under um, under here, I believe. So we're searching for this this title right here. It says see more release dates. And it has a release date right here. I don't know if you can hear the airplane, but there's a very loud airplane. It's kind of distracting. Anyway, so yeah. We go looking for the A tag uh, with the title. Let's we'll see more release dates. What a beautiful title. Anyway, and oh, whoops, I didn't type that right. States. 
Okay, so now we should have access to the release states and we should just be able to print it. Is this 6100? Yes, it is. Um, all right. Uh, okay, so basically it's going to pause because it has to do the request each time. But slowly and surely, you know, it is getting going to each page and after each page, it's searching for the rating and it's printing, the, I mean, the uh, release date and it's printing the release date for the top 200. How much do you need to protect against malformed HTML or changes to the structure by the website owner? So that is a valid concern. Yeah, if anyone, um, sorry, if, sorry. So yeah, if anyone did change the uh, layout, you know, if they wanted to like upgrade to React, if they wanted to change basically any of their structure, then yes, you're right. Um, this would not be able to uh, pick up on that. Like if they change their class names, for example. Um, but IMDb, this is a pretty classic one, honestly, uh, because they haven't changed anything in a very, very, very long time. Uh, but yeah, so that, that does bring up some pretty good points. You know, like it does have to be current. You do have to if there's like a specific question that you have that you're trying to answer by uh, web scraping, you do want to make sure that, you know, you currently look at what it is. You don't want to just pick some random, somebody else's um, like web scraping. Uh, so yeah, it is like, as Renox mentioning, it is like somewhat stable. And so, yeah, but you do have to look into that. Uh, definitely for, for sure. So yeah, um, I'm just going to stop this. So to stop this, you hit control C. I should have mentioned that earlier. Uh, it, if you don't like handle it, it'll, it'll uh, print this whole thing, but we don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, so Daniel's bringing up really good points. So yeah, you do, you do want to like handle errors um, just in general like with all coding so yeah uh, sorry my mouse is lagging okay so yep let's go now time for a challenge so we're going to say we're going to look at this website worldometers.info and basically what this is right now if you go to coronavirus US, country US, it's getting all the coronavirus cases and all of the deaths reported. And so, as you can see, there's this like huge giant, um, yeah, fun. I don't know why, I think they slightly changed their website recently. I don't know why it's formatted like this, but for some reason I have to zoom out a lot, but yeah, basically it's just a huge table and um, it's documenting like, all the case counts. So let's say that you didn't like this table and you were like, I'm gonna make my own table. And um, well, now you can. So um, yeah, what we had originally planned was uh, that we discuss. So we don't have to go into uh, breakout rooms, right? I mean, uh, or anything like that. We could just discuss like in chat if you guys want, because it does seem to be, uh, that's, that's probably fine. So yeah, if anyone has any ideas, basically go to this website um, and try to look at the HTML structure. Right? And we're basically just looking for attributes we can select so that we can um, go through the whole table and get all the current data. So I think we should maybe pause the recording. Okay, welcome back. So let's see. So like we were saying, we have to look through this table and we're trying to find each state with each case. And so basically you could just do the same process that we we're doing before, find the table, the table, 
I believe has a an ID right here, or a class right here called USA Tables div. So what we can do is we can find this this class and only select this table. So actually in the Discord, I heard somebody was saying that we could just use the styles. And so that was a good idea. But the problem is they actually have another table down here that like would also get picked up and would cause errors because they don't have the same uh, amount right here, the same amount of like columns and rows. And so, um, yeah, so first we have to select the table. And once we select the table, we can go in and select each um, each row here. Oh, sorry, not here, uh, here. And, um, and so, yeah, we just, we select each row, we get each row and we get the first. So this is the zero with element. We get the first and second element of each row. Um, and we also have to pay attention to the fact that this is also exists and it doesn't have the same uh, columns. So we also have to have like a, a check for this. So I just, I just for a matter of time, I just put this in. Uh, it's basically the same thing that we've been doing. And so uh, the first thing we want to do again is get the rows. And so like I was saying, we just find them by finding the table with the ID. I mean, the yeah, the ID of uh, USA table. Uh, I don't know why they called it countries, but yeah, countries today. And we find all of the table data, uh, table rows. Oops. So once we've done this, we can loop through. Oh, yeah, for row and rows. And once we loop through the rows, we have to find the uh, table data. And um, so we could do state is equal to row dot find all uh, td. And so like I was saying, when you do this, you get this whole row. And so we want to actually just get the uh, technically second element, but it's one. Um, and so then we just do get text. Um, something that you may want to do is also dot strip. And so what this does is get rid of the backslash n because in a table, uh, when you render HTML, uh, all of these have like a secret backslash n, and that's how they uh, del that's how they delineate for um, each column. So we have to do dot strip to avoid that. And so we do just count is equal to row find all db, and then this time we're doing two because it's this column, and we could just do get underscore text. Um, and then just print them. Uh, so we are going to run into a slight problem, but because of this row, but I just for the sake of showing it, I'm just, I'm going to show it. Uh, and somebody else was mentioning, I was in a, a call and they had some other good ideas as well. So yeah, like, you know, it just shows for coding, you don't have to just always do one way, uh, especially with beautiful soup. There's like so many different things you can select. Uh, but yeah, this is just the way that we've done it. So if you run this right now, uh, that's clear, oops. Then you get an error. Um, and so the error has to do with one of the columns Whoops, wait, did I knock the, no, this is the right URL. So yeah, it's this strip. And so it has to do with this uh, table head right here, this row. So to avoid this row, all we have to do is just the simple uh, if, if check, we could just check for like if it's null or non-existent. So what we can do is actually just do, so if there is no um, TD at that current row, then, because uh, what this is is a TH, 
because it's like a table head technically. Um, then yeah, that basically will just avoid the th and oops, I forgot a colon. And yeah, so now we have, if we scroll all the way down, it actually does not go to the next table. It gets the time and princess ship, which is right here, it gets the total. Um, and yeah, so this will get all of it. And that's basically it for this demo and also for the workshop. So thank you all for coming and yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David, do you have any words you want to say before? Uh, don't really have anything else to say, but yeah. if you guys are interested in learning about data science with Python, um, we're going to have that workshop next week. Um, otherwise, thank you guys for coming. Thomas did a great job presenting. So if I'm say thank you to Thomas in the chat, that'd be great. Um, other than that, good luck on midterms, everyone, and hope to see you guys soon. Thank you.